So CI/CD is something that we all set up to test the code, build artifacts and deploy our changes. In this video, we explore the architecture and internals of Blacksmith that runs your CI/CD action jobs twice as fast, slashing your cost by half with just a single line of code change. Now before we go into the internals of it, let's understand the high level architecture. Now, whenever your GitHub action job is triggered, depending on what rules you have configured, the entire job metadata is sent as a webhook call to Blacksmith's backend. Once Blacksmith's backend receives the job, it extracts the payload, from that it gets the job metadata, it validates it and enqueues it in Redis. Now from here, the Blacksmith's agents take over, which continuously pull Redis to pick the job to be executed. Now before we go into the details of execution, let's understand the secret sauce on why Blacksmith runners run faster than GitHub runners. To put it in simple terms, the whole idea is to use a better hardware to run the jobs. But, won't, but you would say, hey, if better hardware, more cost, then why is it cheaper? The whole idea behind this is, if you use better hardware and you can complete your job execution in less amount of time, you can save cost because everything on the internet is on rent. So everything is built per second that you are consuming it. Right? So that's the whole trade-off that Blacksmith is taking off. So first thing first, if you look at any CI CD job, any CI CD job is basically boils down to a consumption of CPU and disk, right? So what if blacksmith or what if you use faster CPU and faster disk, then you can possibly run your CI CD job much faster, right? That's the whole idea. Let's look at CPU part. In case of, in case of regular GitHub runners, the CPU on which your, your agents are, or on which your runners are running, they're typically AMD Epic CPUs, right? On the other hand, the CPUs that Blacksmith uses are AMD Ryzen 7950X. Now these are high-end gaming CPUs, which are meant for performance, right? But obviously performance comes at a cost. So the whole trade-off is if I can, if I'm using a high-end CPU, but I'm using it for less amount of time, then I can save money, right? That's one. Second is about disk IO. You want faster disk. A regular GitHub runner, when it runs your job, it uses a network attached storage. If you are on AWS ecosystem, something similar to EBS, right? So because it is network attached storage, any file IO operation that you do is done over the network. So it looks like it gives you a Unix like interface, or like Unix file system like interface. But when you do a file read, file write, it actually happens over the network. So it's not as fast as you think it is. So these are a regular, what GitHub regular runner uses. On the other hand, Blacksmith goes for something much more expensive. They use locally attached NVMe disks. Now with this, these are obviously expensive, but because there is no network involved in it, everything happens like these disks are literally attached to the hardware. So you get, so they are extremely fast. But again, the cost of these are very high. But again, the trade-off remains the same. If I'm using expensive, if I'm taking an expensive trade-off, like trade-off against an expensive stuff, and if I'm doing my entire thing in lesser amount of time, I would save money. If you observe carefully, this was very similar to the trade-off that Spark took. Hadoop MapReduce existed that used disk to do the MapReduce operation. Spark stores everything in memory and does the processing, obviously occasionally flushes it to the disk also, but all the computations of Spark are in memory. So initially when you someone looked at it, said, hey, why are you using in memory like RAM to do such high computation? But the trade-off paid off. The Spark job ran in much lesser time although on an expensive hardware, but you would overall save a money, like save a ton of money with that, right? That's the whole idea. But if you also observe carefully, for a regular CI CD job, do you really need a network attached storage? Because what is the key advantage of using a network attached storage, like an EBS for you? The key advantage is if this machine goes down, I'm able to attach this hard disk to some other machine. That's why it's easy, like you could recover from it well, but here, all CI CD jobs are, are typically transient in nature. Even if it fails, your job fails and you would anyway redo the job. So why not just go for a locally attached disk, although expensive, but you get the performance benefit out of it. So by understanding the characteristics of the problem that you are solving, you can make a lot of good design decisions. It's a classic example of that. Right? Now, apart from this, what all is very interesting thing that these guys are doing or what blacksmiths are doing. 
So they, if you observe carefully for your CI CD job, there are a lot of artifacts that you cache. Now, in case of regular GitHub runners, again, these are cached on network attached storage. Right? Now, instead of that, Blacksmith co-locates this cache, cache artifacts on hosts itself. So it gives them a read write time or upload download time of 400 Mbps versus 100 Mbps that you would typically get on a regular GitHub runner. These all things add up and it makes you or it helps you run your entire job in, in half the time and saving you twice the money. Right? That's, the, that's such an interesting trade-off that you take, like looking at hardware first and then optimizing your workload with that. So let's touch upon what are these agents, what these agents do. Now these agents, when they are polling, as we discussed, they're continuously polling Redis to pick up the job that needs to be executed. Now, when they get a job to be executed, what they do is on each of the host, on each of the host, an agent process is running. This agent process is a very simple Go process. What it does, it pulls Redis, gets the job to be executed, it takes that job and to execute this job, it creates a very lightweight VM. Now this lightweight VM, inside this machine, they create a lightweight VM to execute this. Now this lightweight VM, they create an isolated variant of it using Firecracker. Firecracker is open source by AWS, so you can check out it, it's a fab project. And this is typically how your code evaluators, like your code chef lead codes of the world, they run on Firecracker VMs. Right? So this is an extremely lightweight VM, which runs in an isolated container. You fire the code or whatever you want to execute in that, you execute in that, even if it crashes, it does not affect your entire host. That's why it's a very lightweight VM running on the host machine. And this is, and the isolation of these VMs is taken care using C groups. And that is typically how your Docker works. Right? So they leverage Firecracker VMs. So on this host machine, an agent process is running. When it receives a job to be executed, it spins up a Firecracker VM, executes the job, whatever the status needs to be communicated, it basically communicates back to the GitHub and whatnot, right? And then in case something fails, any anything that goes wrong, it does not affect any other job because it runs in isolation with respect to C groups, which limits the amount of resources it can consume. So this is how Blacksmith optimizes your entire CI/CD workflow by leveraging good hardware, right? And running your job in half the time, saving you twice the money. And this is what I wanted to cover in this one. So I would really recommend you to give Blacksmith a shot. It looks pretty awesome. So with just a single line of change for your code, right? And you would see your jobs running twice as fast. So yeah, this is all what I wanted to cover in this one. I hope you found it interesting. Hope you found it amazing. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.